Right, well, I'm not even going to do an intro on this because I'm lazy and it's going to be like a, a quick five-minute <laughs> video. So it's just content, craven content for when I'm taking ages to edit one of our marathon blitherings and just need something to chuck up to make sure the alcohol mm. still remembers who we are. So for your bit of generic throwaway content today, people, um, we have hobby tips. Yes, we're going to be one of those one of those channels. <laughs> Matt's got five. I told Matt to come up with five. Did you get, did you get five? I kind of got six, but the last three are really short. So technically four and a half <laughs> maybe yeah i was about to say you went above and above and beyond but it, it sounds like you've gone below and beyond which that sounds much worse <laughs> okay, there was a cool. new diablo 4 patch and they've completely overhauled the loot system so i was a bit distracted after work today he's an honest I man am. he's a lazy man but he's an honest oh, yeah, man. i was hard at work playing diablo i wasn't lazy at all <laughs> Well, what we're doing is we'll just we'll just do your five because what I would hate to do is like I'd do all your six because I'd, <laughs> I'd hate for me to do five and then by the end of it you're like yeah I'm down to two yeah because um, <laughs> I can probably make some bollocks up because I'm I'm also quite lazy. Well, to be fair, I think the first one can probably be broken down into two. Oh, no 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 cheat no cheating dude okay. no no cheating no no go for it go okay, for it well yeah, break out break first out one, go on. thin your paints thin your paints preferably using uh, yes. a wet palette uh, army painter do a absolutely. decent one oh. I'll be honest with you, hmm. I only use my wet palette if I'm blending or layering. If I'm base coating, I don't I don't use a wet palette and I'll tell you what I do use in a minute as one of my hobby tips. So yeah, yeah, no cool, but Finley Paints is absolutely a a thing. Yeah. Yeah. When I worked at GW, there was kids that would literally take a space marine and dip it into a pot of paint, because back then the pot paint pots were quite big. <laughs> you could. Yeah. I, I, sad. I, I, I bit my tongue, let's put it that way, rather than biting that little tyke's fingers, no. fingers Use off. Use a brush. Use a brush. Less is more. And water down your paints. Yeah. Yep. That's a fine first tip. That I would like to think that any of our grognard viewers would know, Matt, to be honest. But it's fine. I did take them up with five tips. I did take them up with five expert tips. <laughs> yeah. But my first one basically says thin paints and keep a record of what colours go where and how, which is something I am... Oh, um, damn it. Yeah, sorry, man. That was one. That was one of mine. <laughs> Which I'm painfully struggling with because my 30k Dark Angels and thus my Epic Dark Angel are basically a mix of Vallejo Candy Black and Vallejo Metallic Black over a metallic silver base coat. Sounds horribly convoluted. So you still get a bit of a, <laughs> a metallic sheen come through. It's not that bad. Yep. It's basically just ba- base coat the thing. I was using armor painted chainmail, but their their rattle cans are sus. So I stopped using it and now they're gunmetal instead. Yeah, I don't use army paint sprays anymore. Awful, no. awful quality. And then once that's dried, obviously I've got like a, a pre-mix of the two blacks. So you just airbrush it on or paint it on, how many, depending on how many okay. you're doing. The problem is I made up my pot of that mix of black about three years ago. And now I'm like, mm. what fucking ratio did I use of those two blacks? I know there's more candy black than metallic because obviously I want it to be more transparent than not. Otherwise, there's no point in yeah. putting a metallic undercoat on. And I'm Sad certain, times. I'm certain that I made a note of the ratio somewhere. I've got a book. I've got a nice. I don't know where it came from, but I've got a nice um, embossed Imperial Eagle. Oh, book. that's probably I from think Warhammer. It came. No, it's not. It came as a freebie from a subscription that I did. That's all I can uh, tell you. Not Conquest. Well, I think you. I think you just salvaged your point because I didn't mention the book. Basically, past Matt needs this future Matt video. He fucking does. <laughs> Bloody idiot. Obviously, when you do remember your recipe, you're going to write it down. Preferably yeah. in a book. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because I, I make quite weird paint mixes for most things. I have I have uh, a recipe book. I have everything in. So uh, yeah, cool. No, okay. What's, okay, your, what's so your next one, dude? Point three. It says, don't let this unpainted pile pile up. Because psychologically, for me at least, if I have a massive pile of undercoated miniatures that need to be done, it really messes mm-hmm. with my motivation to get started because it looks like such an overwhelming heap that you're never going to mm. get. So why even bother starting? Yeah, no, that's a good one. I like that because most of our piles of shame are in sprue form boxes, yeah. potentially out of sight, out of mind. You can't actualize it. You can't realize it. It's abstract. It's just boxes or it's sprues. When you see it as an army that requires yeah. painting. Unfortunately for like... me, it's very much not abstract. It's fucking strewn all over my desk, literally. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really sure what's going on with the brain. But like ever since I lost my dad uh, and that was both parents gone, I just lost the bill to paint. Mm. Just completely just was just like, I can't be bothered. I still love getting new stuff and I love assembling them. 
and then once they're assembled, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, better go and base coat it, I undercoat it, off they go. And then they just come back and sit on my desk, or they sit in a box somewhere, and then I'm like, mm. I need those for a game, and then that will probably push me to paint. Prompt get, you to get them painted, yeah, yeah, yeah. And get, like, get at least a squad done to a fairly decent mm. standard, rather than just being yeah, I mean, I've probably, one colour. I reckon I've probably got somewhere in the region of around about three or four hundred assembled models that aren't painted. That makes me feel much better, yeah. <laughs> um, if, if if not more we're talking thousands and thousands of points because yeah. i tend to i tend to assemble things and then leave them be because i can normally the thing is i can i can easily assemble stuff while doing other things i can have something on tv and i can be assembling stuff no problem yeah. at all got it's nice and relaxing with. yeah even less even less so than painting although i do really enjoy painting so yeah no i think that's another good one and not one that i would have thought of man so yeah that's a mm. that's a that's a really good one don't yes. let the visible yes. pile of shame become intimidating yeah. As I say, we've all got it, and normally it's in boxes, but don't surround yourself no, with yeah, unpainted models. You, you know, you end up in my position, which is slightly laid back in a very comfy chair, looking at a whole lot of <laughs> base-coated stuff and just going, oh, fuck's sake. Uh, there's two ways of looking at it. Either pick a unit that you're probably going to enjoy painting the most, or pick mm-hmm. a unit that you know you're probably going to need to use next. Get all the other stuff out of sight, but make sure you know where it is, because losing expensive models sucks. And then just kind of sit down and just get that unit done. Mm. either do colors at a time or just do one model first from start to finish and then put it somewhere prominent and then go right need to do the rest of them that color and because you've done one model then you can kind of start doing batch painting where you just do all of one color that one that one that one that one next color that model that model that blah, 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 and then you get them all done that way and then once they're done put them somewhere nice and then get out the next lot and just have them sitting there ready to go at some point like just don't leave them cool. all around because it messes with your head <laughs> no, I get that, man. It was number three, wasn't it? That cool. was. Number four? Um, make sure you've got somewhere to put models when you finish them. Yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, you've, you've spent probably a fair bit of money into getting the things. You've spent time and effort in putting them together. You've spent even more time and effort, if you're not me, painting the things. And then just having them kind of sitting around, yep. climbing pets or children yep. can get to them or they can get knocked or whatever. Uh, I mean, I've got next to my chair here, I've got like two of those glass IKEA yeah, the dead elves. I've got three of those, the, three of those in my it. hobby rooms with additional shelves. Yeah, that's it. So I've got a whole bunch of, of armies like crowded into mm. those because they look kind of cool. Invest in those. Yes, they're well, it's IKEA, so it's not exactly well expensive, but it's not exactly cheap either. Uh, they're like forty quid each, I think. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, this is ten odd years ago, but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but when they're when they're put together and they're standing somewhere, it's, if you get like little LED lights for him, so they're all yes, yeah. absolutely. I was going to say yeah, put some LED lights in it. It looks really nice. You get the satisfaction out of having painted it and having it display. It's much nicer than sticking painted models into um, cases. Yeah, I don't like that. And the only time that a model yeah. should be in a case is if it's unpainted and you just want it out of the way and safe, or yeah. If you're traveling yeah, with the all that. I mean, to be fair, that was going to be my alternative. Like, if you've got nowhere to display them, then by all means, get your hands on a decent case. And yeah, absolutely. If you've got if you've got somewhere. nowhere to display them, then you do need to put them in a case. Simple as that. But if you can get them in a nice, you know, display way, then it's always nice to look at them. And just go, I get something out of this hobby. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, KR multi cases. I absolutely mm-hmm. love them. Yeah, KR. Um, good. They are. They are my. They're cheap as well. Case. Cardboard. Cardboard. Yeah, yeah. They're cardboard, it. which it sounds shit. But they're sturdy as no, hell. They're safe. They're safe. You can stack them. They're good. I've got cardboard KR model cases. Loads of them. It's worth spending a bit more to make sure they don't get the smashed to bits. Absolutely. When you, when you put protecting. them in storage or if you go travelling with them. Don't do what don't do what Stu did and just chuck them all in a box. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Maybe sad every time I saw it. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. Tip five. Uh, tip five, don't be a dick. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a hobby tip, but yeah, I guess. No, yeah. It's, a bit of, it's a bit of a life tip. But basically, like, if you've got a set a group that you game with, Alan, uh, don't turn up with stuff for a game that you know is going to rock the boat. Alan, you know, like, 12 Wraiths, Alan, people don't like that. To be fair on you, you're not a, a that fucking guy. You just did it very rarely when you felt like trolling someone. Pretty much. But, Same yeah. as when I bought along an MDF neck from Pylon that I didn't tell anybody about. No, we won't talk about that. Um, that was fun. But, we were playing like a was it a twelve thousand point game? Yeah, apocalypse. Yeah. And, yeah, um, and everybody, sent in, everybody sent in a picture of their armies, and I sent in a picture of my Necron army, which I'll put in the video because I've still got the photo. What I didn't tell everybody was in my army list was a Necron pylon, 
Forge World one. But because I was poor, I just bought an MDF one from uh, BT Combat. <laughs> and then just put it on the table and one shot a night. <laughs> yeah, deleted a lot of stuff. That's oh, right, I had knights. I had knights and titans, didn't I? I was like, I'll, speak yes, yeah, yeah, I'll just yeah. bring a handful of models with me. <laughs> or apocalypse. That was a good laugh. No, you're right. Yeah, don't be a dick. As soon as people were genuinely getting a little bit annoyed, I stopped using the neck ones. <laughs> yeah. It was as simple as that. Yeah. And my neck ones went 27 games unbeaten. I can vouch for that. It was terrific. An entire edition unbeaten. I think the closest um, thing to a win that anyone had was Stu got a draw with you. Very relic, close. Yeah, the, game no, the, the closest I ever had was, it um, Lee? was actually, no, no, it wasn't Lee. It was um, a guy who works for, um, oh God, I think he works for Modifius now. I'm not sure in sales, but um, he used his Thousand Sons and he nearly oh, okay. wounded me. Smite, spam, yeah, spam me yeah Necrons don't really have a great deal of psychic defence today, apart from Gloom Prisons on Spiders. By, by not a great deal, you mean zero, pretty much. So, yeah. So, yes, no, you're absolutely right. Don't be a dick. Um, yeah. A game is a contract between two people to have yeah, fun. Social if contract. one of those people is not having fun, then you're doing something wrong. Exactly. Obviously, tournaments and stuff takes that off the table. If you go into a tournament, then you're expected it's competitive and everything like that. But yeah. If you just say, look, let's have a game. With your mate or you know just anybody really like random then don't turn up and just destroy them this is not it's not fun yeah. and you won't you know people won't want to play games with you if someone if you've got a game arranged and you're going to be like oh i'm going to bring my old R along or whatever and they're going to be like oh, okay i'm going to bring along my guard if one of you wants to bring along a wraith knight and the other one wants to bring along a bane blade just give each other a heads up you know it's not necessarily about tailoring your list to beat the other person but if someone's going to completely rock the boat by bringing along some form of super heavy or something like that, then at least give your opponent a heads up so that they can maybe yes. adjust their list to counter it in some way. Yes. Otherwise, yes. someone's going to have a shit game. And if one person has a shit game and they're a certain type of person, they'll make sure that the other person has yeah. a shit game as well. Like the, the Necron Pylon thing, I would have never have pulled in a one-on-one. No. On one. It was literally like you were taking a Warhound tight, and I was like, "Yeah, I want a, I want yeah. a massive thing as well." That's and fair the Ceratept construct construct did not exist at that time. No, no. But like, yeah. So just it, it also applies to stuff like rules as well. Games Workshop, old school Games Workshop, and I think it still applies to this day. Have always said that their their rules are a framework for people to have fun with and to base games on. You know, so if there's an aspect of the rule set that you don't like, and you've got a solid group of friends that you play with every week then there's no harm in sitting down with them and saying, guys, I don't like this one particular aspect. Are we okay to house rule it so that this happens instead? And then just sit down with them one week and maybe test it out and see if everyone's okay with it and then just factor it into games from from that point on. Not being a dick doesn't mean not just about throwing your toys out of the pram if stuff doesn't go your way or bringing along something just to fuck someone over. It also Mm. means to accommodate other people if they're not having too much fun, like with something else. And that also yep. applies to like games that you play and stuff like that. Do you guys want to play this? No, nah, I don't really like it. Okay, fine. What about this instead? Okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's fair enough. Don't, don't be a dick. It goes a long way. Yep, cool. Six. You could definitely tell that I was getting just bored at this point because it just says wash, lol. <laughs> yes, hygiene, important. <laughs> yes, it is. There's, there's a stereotype, unfortunately, sometimes... It's all too apparent. Why? I feel like this this might be directly, directly off the back of your UKGE experience. <laughs> oh, I mean, that is it's a bit of a different thing. It's a long walk from the car park, and if it's hot outside, you're going to be a little bit of a sweaty mess. Because let's face it. Yeah, but carry carry yeah. deodorant or something, man. You know, like yeah. Some there's. I'm not the fittest of people. Like I can walk half a mile. It's not really a problem. But if it's really hot, I kind of wish that I'm not having to walk half a mile. And by the time I get to where I'm going, I'm a bit like. I'm a, I'm a bit more damp than I'd like to be. <laughs> Moist. <laughs> this is not cool, yeah. But yeah, like, just, just be a little bit socially aware, especially if you're going to be going to like a tournament. Just be a just be a bit aware. No offence to anyone. You know, we're, we're all built how we're built, one way or another. So, uh, but, you know. Yeah, it's, it's fair enough. I think that's, uh, yeah, that's all good. It's all good. As I say, um, I'm not sure all of those necessarily apply to... Uh, the learned grognards that we have but nah. it's all good it's all good tips so it's all good tips but everyone's cool. met one. Oh yes for sure the last one is also two words and then it says use mag so don't be afraid to, uh, mm. yeah it's a little bit of a chore to do and it can make your little fingers sore if you have to drill stuff and whatnot especially if you slip and get your finger with it and whatnot mm-hmm. but models ain't cheap usually especially games workshop yep. so 
it, it... I have mixed feelings on this. For one hand, yes, magnetizing, you get to use more bits. Uh, you have to buy less yeah. models. This is all very good. Um, it is out of also more stuff to paint. So I would say magnetize where possible and where you think it's going to benefit you, but do not feel compelled to magnetize every single option because yeah. you can put you off painting stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, I, not I, arms I, and stuff, not so bad, but nah. every single weapon in a box. weapons option for an yeah, infantry, don't, infantry unit. Don't bother. Don't like, bother. Yeah, it's just don't, it's too much. Don't have to... You'll spend more time. I got my, um, I got my Chaos Warrior army for Age of Sigmar magnetized all the weapons options. So <laughs> they could do double hand weapon, uh, great weapon, hand weapon and shield. Hmm. And then GW promptly went and deleted one of those weapons options. So it's completely pointless. <laughs> Fuckers. So um, as you say, just bear that in mind. Yeah. And yeah, no, I think, I think they're all pretty good, pretty good tips. Magnetizing can be fun. Yeah, like dreadnoughts especially very good for magnetizing because their arms they're big and chunky, mm-hmm. so there's there's some leeway with doing stuff. They're not small and fiddly joints. Terminators are also a good one. I mean, if you're going to be imperial, yeah, most of them are probably going to have power fists. But then there's always going to be the special weapon guy, and rather than going out of your way to try and sort out an assault cannon, a flamer, and in my case, a plasma cannon, terminator, just mag up these three arms and just mag yeah, up yeah. that. Mag up where the arm Yeah, if it's, if it's minimal amount of mag. I mean, like, I magged um, Titans. Titans are always a good one to mag. Yes, especially for AT. Mag those up. Yeah, exactly. For a, to, to can, not to knights. Take this. It's not worth it for the knights. It's really not. <laughs> no, they're too small. But again, yeah. knights in 40k, it suddenly does become worth it. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, yeah choose your magnet. You know, I mean, those people who are um, magnetizing Legion Imperialis tanks. No. I'm just like, you are fucking insane no i think the smaller stuff that i magnetize terminators for heresy yeah the arms and stuff i wouldn't probably go any smaller than that again just because otherwise and the thing is like, especially with something like terminators you've got like 10 terminators and there's like what three or four different weapons loadouts for them it's yeah. like 40 terminators that's a lot of terminators if i just swap yep. the arms in and out that's gonna be much better yep. so space and everything and, and as you say money yeah no i think there's yep. um that's it's all like good points a, yeah i think for terminators it's just like three mil by one mil disc magnets yep exactly much, yeah that's all you need just a whole Stick bunch in the of them. shoulder. The hardest bit was was basically the shoulder pads, because you get more arms than you do shoulder pads. Yeah, true. So I, I had to put this. I had to glue the shoulder pad on there and then magnetize the arm underneath the shoulder pad. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So the shoulder pad. But that's good because it, it hides it hides the magnet join uh, magnet yep. join as well. So yeah, it's all good. That's me done. Right. So my first one was actually yeah. I mean it was going to be a, a recipe book. So I have a book. I write down all my recipes in it for all my armies, and that way if I forget what because quite often i'll do an army to a point and then leave it and then come back to it much later to finish off the last few units or get inspired or i'll buy some new stuff and you don't want to be forgetting how you achieved that this is a good idea having your army look different um, yeah to the rest of the army so yeah that's uh, that's one thing another one is a product and that is guitar wire Buy yourself some guitar strings. You want to get one mid gauge, like mm, 38 or something like that, and then you want one small, like a high E11. The high E11 for is un- unblocking those glue nozzles, you know, the metal ones, mm. and the higher gauge is for unblocking the Leo paint pots. <laughs> so you could just because what will happen is that the the paint will just solidify in in the nozzle and rather than squeezing it until it comes out which is a very bad move <laughs> and ends up with the paint exploding everywhere yeah, um just get a 38 gauge guitar string poke 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 shake 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 done so yeah i've got it's probably more useful than a paper clip yeah i mean uh, the, the paper clip won't go down the metal tube nozzle for like the ravel exacto or exacta i think it's called glue you know the precision stuff oh the, the poly yeah yeah exactly i usually just use fire yes <laughs> i used to and i burnt myself twice and nearly exploded a glue bottle once <laughs> so because you take the, the metal thing out obviously um, Tube out. but if you've not yeah. waited for it to cool before you put it back into the glue then plus because i don't smoke i can never normally lay my hands on a lighter so now i've just uh. got a few lengths of guitar because like you literally guitar strings what a quid a quid on ebay or from a guitar shop I've not bought well, guitar string. Not, me, well, no, you, you're a bass string. player. But, I'm a um, bass player, so yeah, it's like I mean, 20 quid Yeah, set. you can get guitar strings cheap, and I'll just cut a load of lengths off, put them in with my paintbrushes and stuff, or like a little separate thing I've got, and then use those. So that's my first tip, is to use that. My second tip is to use two paint water receptacles all times. Don't just use one water cup or whatever mug. Use two. Use one to wash and one to rinse, because that way what will happen is one will get all manky with the paint and everything, <laughs> And then the other one will stay nicer. 
you don't want to be just washing in that one pot and using that same water to water down your paints because it will just get manky. You want to use two paint tubs or, you know, or, or jars or cups or whatever. One wash, one rinse. And another thing that also does is if you wash a brush that's had metallic paint on it in a water jug, then you get a little flex of metallic in there. Um, again, you don't be putting that straight back onto your palette because you will contaminate your paints. You want to give it a rinse first in a semi-clean or mostly clean water tub that's been used just for rinsing. So yeah, two, two water washing uh, receptacles. My third tip, I will get through these a lot quicker than Matt did, is one that I can't take too much credit for, but is one that I saw on either Facebook or YouTube. I think it was a YouTube video. And that is to use fidget poppers as a palette. Uh, this might sound a little bit crazy, but I said I don't use a wet palette all the time. The reason I don't use a wet palette all the time is because if you are just base coating a model, there's not much point in using that precious wet palette real estate. You want to use that for blending. You want to use it for uh, you know layering. You want to use it for mixing. You don't want to be just slapping a load of Mephiston Red onto a wet palette and then putting that straight onto a model. There is no point. So I use those fidget puppers things. You can get them for about a quid, two quid. I've got a load that I grabbed from a website. Some are like Hulk's Fist and some are like Thor's Hammer. And they've got little, little, little <laughs> divots in them that are That's supposed to, yeah, I mean, they're supposed to be for sensory fidgety things. I've never really found that particularly interesting. They are brilliant for is painting because what you can do is you can pop a little paint in the, in the little divot and use that chuck a little bit of water in there and then you've got paint you can do paintbrush into and paint your model but the great thing is once it's all dried not only can you just turn the damn thing over pop it all through again and use the other side so means that the paint the dried paint just comes off really easy because they're a uh, silicon type thing you can just get them and mush them in between your hands and all that paint will just flake off rather than using a plastic artist palette which is what i did in the past with the little divots in it and then the paint dries into the bottom of it and then it takes ages to scrub it out with a fucking scouring pad or something like that and hot water so no. yeah fidget poppers for the win that would be my third tip my fourth tip this is going to sound really dumb but have a look at the model before you paint it so pick the model up and before you start applying paint just give it a good look turn it around see if there's any weird bits that you might accidentally miss of a certain color because i remember a time that we were talking about inquisitor earlier in the, in the previous video we did and i painted up a 56 or 52 middle or whatever it is inquisitor covenant painted his face amazing looked really good one of the best paces i ever painted painted the entire damn thing to finished level and then realized that i'd not painted his ear because <laughs> he had that, these weird sideburn things going on like a rockabilly sideburns and I just didn't notice his ear next mm. to it. I assumed his hair went over it, and it didn't. So have a good look at the model. Make sure you're going to paint everything where it needs to be painted, because especially things like faces, you want to paint it all in the first hit. You don't want to be going back to it later and trying to recreate what you did the first time round. And sometimes you'll have bits on models that blend into other bits. You'll have soft details. You'll have belts that will suddenly disappear, or armor panels that do what you expect them to do. And you just want to know where you're putting that paint in advance. And my fifth tip is the most important one, in my opinion. And that is don't beat yourself up if you don't feel like painting something in particular at that particular time. So if you've been painting Space Marines for ages because you're doing a Space Marine army and you just cannot face the idea of painting another fucking Space Marine, don't beat yourself up over it. Try something else. Pick up something else. Use a different colour. Paint a bit of scenery. Do some dry brushing. You know, if painting is a therapy to you, you need to make sure it is a therapy to you. You do not want to make it into a chore. You do not want to make it into something you feel compelled to do. So if you're not having fun painting whatever you're painting, paint something else. And if you can't paint anything at all, assemble something. Because when I worked for GW, painting all of the store's models nearly destroyed my hobby because I would feel compelled to paint them. It'd be like, you need to get this army painted for release day. So then when that army came now, I didn't want to paint any more of it. So I had to make sure that I painted something else. So if you've done loads of batch painting and you're sick of batch painting, and you're sick of painting a particular colour and a particular shoulder pad and a particular rim, treat yourself. Do a character. Even if it's from a completely different range. Hell, even buy yourself a character just to paint. Or, you know, it could be anything. That's why I like these um, Warhammer Underworlds things so much. It's because when I've painted a load of a certain model... I can just get those four or five models for the Underbirds Warband and just go nuts on them and just paint something completely different. 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, from a mental health perspective, don't beat yourself up if you don't feel like painting anything in particular. Put it to one side, come back to it. You know, writers get writer's block, painters get painter's block. It's no problem. It happens to the best of us. But if painting is a therapy to you, don't let that therapy become a chore. Pick something else up. Pick up a, I don't know, a piece of scenery and dry brush it or, you know, just, I don't know, piss about some paints or, you know, whatever. Just always make it fun because if it ain't fun you ain't gonna enjoy it you're not gonna want to do it and that's how your hobby dies and that's how you just start to resent it this stuff is too expensive to be doing that with <laughs> it's you know it's not cheap at all so uh yeah that's my that's my five i was lazy i only, only did five given time i could probably think of others another one that i would say especially with something like um citadel paints and i don't like citadel paints for this reason is clean out the rims of dried paint because otherwise what will happen is the paint won't close properly and it will dry up and it will waste money on paint but honestly your best move is just not to use citadel <laughs> just use a different paint company but yeah that's a, that's about it really i think uh, i just wanted to do something different not moaning about stuff five little hobby tips from each of us and it's another video that i could put together in, well it was meant to be a five minute video but um <laughs> it went a, a little bit longer than expected <laughs> And um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll check that up and uh, hopefully you enjoy that. And if you've got any tips of your own, put them in the comments below and uh, let us know what you think of our tips. Apologize for the low effort. <laughs> you forsook our audience to go and play Diablo 4. But because we're all nerds, we'll forgive you. So it's all to be fair, I need to um, I need to finish that game myself. I still haven't finished the campaign. See, you're <laughs> Right, cool. Um, okay, guys. Um, thanks for listening. We'll catch you later.